A dramatic hearing of the January 6th committee had focused on Donald Trump calling in his supporters to come to the Capitol and what he was told about what could happen as extremist groups mobilized in response. For the first time, we heard testimony from Trump's White House counsel, who detailed an intense clash, people screaming at each other in the Oval Office over proposals to seize voting machines and overturn the election. Congressional correspondent Rachel Scott is on Capitol Hill. Good morning, Rachel. George, good morning. The committee really bringing to light that unhinged meeting at the White House that ended in a near fist fight, painting a picture of a former president who failed to come to grips with reality and left the White House in chaos. This morning, new evidence that Donald Trump's call for his supporters to march to the Capitol wasn't spontaneous. It was planned well in advance. And after this, we're going to walk down and I'll be there with you. Lawmakers pointing to a Trump tweet drafted days before the insurrection to summon the crowd to the Capitol. Although this tweet was never sent, rally organizers were discussing and preparing for the march to the Capitol in the days leading up to January 6. Trump repeatedly ignored his top White House advisors who told him he lost the election. From his attorney general to his daughter Ivanka and White House counsel Pat Cipollone. There is no evidence of election fraud sufficient to undermine the outcome in particular state. Yes, I agree with that. Trump turned to those who told him what he wanted to hear. Outside advisors like Sidney Powell pushing wild conspiracy theories without any evidence to back up their false claims. At some point, you have to put up or shut up. That was my view. All of it came to a head during an explosive meeting at the White House on December 18th. Unofficial advisors in the Oval Office pushing outlandish plans to overturn the election. At one point, uh, General Flynn took out a diagram that supposedly showed IP addresses all over the world and or IP, who, was, who was communicating with whom via the machines and some comment about like Nest thermostats being hooked up to the Internet. That meeting erupted in shouting matches, insults, profanity, near fist fights. Cipollone and Hirschman and uh, whoever the other guy was showed nothing but contempt and disdain uh, of the president. You're asking one simple question as a, as a general matter. Where is the evidence? And she says, well, the judges are corrupt. And I was like, everyone, every single case that you've done in the country you guys lost, every one of them is corrupt, even the ones we appointed. Trump watched it all play out, and hours later, just after midnight, tweeted this call to his supporters to be in Washington on January 6th, promising it will be wild. The committee says right-wing extremist groups were listening. You better look outside. <laughs> you better look out January 6th. Kick that door open. Look down the street. The time for games is over. The time for action is now. Where were you when history called? That call to action brought Stephen Ayers to Washington that day. He has pleaded guilty to disorderly conduct. So why did you decide to march to the Capitol? Well, basically, uh, you know, the president, you know, got everybody riled up, told everybody to head on down. So we basically were just following what he said. Another man whose life was forever changed by the violence on January 6th, Capitol Police Sergeant Aquilino Gunnell. Sergeant Gunnell's team of doctors told him that permanent injuries he has suffered to his left shoulder and right foot now make it impossible for him to continue as a police officer. He must leave policing for good and figure out the rest of his life. Gunnell wiping away tears, and as that hearing wrapped, Ayers, that accused rioter, coming face to face with the officers who defended the Capitol, apologizing. Sergeant Gunnell told me he did accept that apology from Ayers and two other big revelations that I want to get to out of this hearing. The committee revealing text messages from Brad Parscale. This is Trump's former campaign manager. He's actually still working closely with the former president. Well, he said that a sitting president was calling for a civil war, even insisting that Trump's rhetoric had deadly consequences. And then a warning about possible witness tampering from Congresswoman Liz Cheney, saying that Trump did, in fact, reach out to a witness that has not not yet publicly testified, and they referred that information over to the Justice Department, George. Okay, Rachel, thanks. Let's bring in our chief legal analyst, Dan Abrams. So, Dan, as you watch all these hearings, it's pretty clear to me, me the committee's trying to build a criminal case. Where do you think that stands right now? I, I think they're pretty much in the same place they were at the end of the last hearing, meaning the last hearing demonstrated what I think was the single most important piece, 
which is that they say that Donald Trump knew that the protesters were armed, knew that they were going to the Capitol. That may be the most important piece. I didn't see anything yesterday that moved that potential criminal investigation forward. I think for there to be an indictment here, you would need some level of communication between Donald Trump or his inner circle and the extremists, and they didn't deliver. That doesn't mean it should be that. That's, that's what I think right. it That's will for be. a conspiracy case, not for a case to simply obstruct an official proceeding of the government. Correct. And I think that Donald Trump, having used the word peacefully um, in his speech, would serve as enough for the Department of Justice to say, we're not going to go there. Quite a tease at the very end of the hearing yesterday from Congresswoman Liz Cheney saying that they heard from a new witness that the country hasn't seen who was called by President Trump before possible testimony. That was a warning to President Trump. I mean, the conversation never happened, right? So there wasn't the actual witness intimidation. But that was a warning. We saw that in the Cassidy Hutchinson testimony as well when someone else had reached out to her informing her about who was watching her, testimony, et cetera. The committee very concerned about possible witness intimidation. They've alerted the Department of Justice, but for now, I think it's just Liz Cheney saying, we're watching you. Dan Abrams, thanks very much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.